Welcome back to Stratford Paddock. This is the review of what was a very chaotic, kind of hard to analyse, but well fought draw to Liverpool. Two all. We played Liverpool now three times and they have failed to beat us. And I think it's one of those games where beforehand I was like, I would have taken a two all. But I think going two one up, knowing that we're still trying to salvage top six. I think Lou kind of throwing the game away there with a little bit of a lose challenge from Wamba Saka kind of made it a little bit more bitter. But I think 2-2 two, two or would you have taken that before the game? Yeah, definitely. Definitely would have took the 2-2. Two, two. Obviously, I would have rather a prediction of 2-1 coming, to be brutally honest. But yeah, it just feels a little bit disappointing with, with the with the manner that we've drew the game. You know, like a bit of a rash. Because it's not usually like him. He usually times it to perfection. And it's a bit of a silly tackle. And, and yeah, but listen, you can't fault them. The application, the commitment, you know, a lot of change from the first half. You know, a bit of a bounce back ability coming out of the second half, giving it a good go. And I feel like, yeah, it was it's it's a point. Should it have been free? I would like to think so. I hope, uh, hopefully. I know it's, it's a difficult one because after the first half, I think we're all fearing the worst. Yeah. It was, we didn't have a shot on goal. I feel um, Liverpool were getting in at will. I think they had almost 15 shots in the first yeah, half. I think we've got yeah. 28 shots again conceded. Um, if you look at the XG after the game, um, Liverpool and XG are 3.9, whereas United had one that was under one. Obviously, I'm not yeah. sure what the XG was for Bruno's goal. So when you look at the game in a macro sense, in totality, it's it again wasn't a great performance from United. I think it was spirited a bit at parts in the second half. I thought when after Manu's goal, which was absolutely class yeah, and showing the, the quality of the lad, I think we gained a little bit of bit of momentum and then we kind of give it and back with the Wambasaka um oh. foul and I thought some of the substitutions as well yeah. kind of gave the impetus yeah. back to back to the Liverpool. Subs. I think I was I was going to jump in and say that I think RH said earlier about the substitutions that's the first thing you highlighted and like giving the momentum back you say I felt that was probably a lot of that was down to the sub like I didn't really understand cuz you chucked Amrabat in that midfield. Mm. And I felt what we needed was probably mount wide and then just allowing Bruno to still have that centre of the park, um, I think would have been the better way to close out the game. But obviously the sub happened. Uh, talking about the result overall, you, you take it with the situation Man United are in. Um, I think you've got to take it. I think Bruno and, and Cobby as well, two fantastic goals. Amazing, yeah. Um, sort of two moments out of nothing in a way. Like even Cobby, that goal is, is a very difficult finish to turn and to put it that far corner. And then Bruno... He actually takes that shot first time. We're just watching it over again now. And, he, you know, you've got to make it count when you go for that shot there. Um, it's hard to not take a touch and then go for it. So, yeah, I think huge respect to a lot of the players as well because there was a lot of effort put onto that pitch. And it was just, like I said, just want to see that fight. Um, hmm. Fight in a game like today. And hopefully it stops them in their races to a title charge. And when, you, when you're down in the dumps, we said this before the stream started earlier, before the game, and I said... It's like vice versa, same thing with Liverpool. When Liverpool were down in the period and we had Sir Alex Ferguson and we were winning titles, that game mattered so much to them to just ruin the flow of the title charge. And in a way, it is a bit, sometimes you see it a small time, you think, nah, we should be aiming higher and we should. But that's the situation the club's in and it's just lovely that you, yeah. you're able to do that. Yeah, I agree. Because I'm looking at the goal now from from Manu and <sighs> Special. It, Unreal, it was mate. so reminiscent that Manu goal of the one wow. that Federico Micaela okay, scored yeah, for Villa yeah. just a swivel there that area of the box and the quality to finish it That's when, which, which, which definitely wasn't his best game but what the class players do is they can produce moments, moments like that yeah. and I've, I personally think that Manu goal deserved to win the game do you know what I mean and I'm kind of sad that we did give it away but when we're talking about positives I want to give like a huge shout out to Maguire and Camboala yeah. today because a lot of the discourse really? before yeah. the game was the fact that we had so many of our centre halves out injured. We've had these kind of almost carousel of partnerships in that area, and I thought Maguire and Camboala were superb today. They were front foot, they were aggressive. They almost treated it like a United versus Liverpool game, and I thought without some of their before without their performance today, yeah, it could have been a lot worse. And I thought Anana also was very solid. I think Anana. And his performances recently are going under the radar a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, I did say at half time when your best players in a game are your two centre halves and your keeper, Bit it kind of shows what the type of the game was. Mm. Because once again, Bruno scored his goal, brilliance, but his performance today probably was one of oh, his bro, worst. Yeah, and he has yeah. been underperforming quite a lot. 
there were a lot of bad performances. There were a couple of decent ones, and we've got out with a two-all draw, and it doesn't really help us in a sense of no, chasing top five us. and chasing the Champions League, yeah. but at least it puts a little bit of a dent in Liverpool's title hopes. Yeah, I think like like you said about Bruno's goal there, like the technique, technique's fantastic to to cut across it in that like sort of low drive. And Mania's goal, like like Ronnie said, there it's like a Bacada, but the whip and first touch set it up with a body shape to the whip to the far post, brilliant. And it is a is a goal that you know is worthy of winning a game. But you got to see the game out. Like it's just a bit yeah. stupid from from Wan Bazaka there to dive in and stuff like that. I know we you know you shown us there like yeah, did he make contact, contact or you, did don't, it, you, you don't you don't dive do yeah. it because what, you what could we see it coming did, as well. What we did very well for the majority of that game, and I said it earlier, was we just looked to close the space not give enough amount of a shot outside of you know the first opening minutes Rembo and Salah kept getting that shot mm. on the edge outside of that we done very well to you know close the space and just watch the situation yeah and then sort of push out and what we were doing there with what Wan Bissaka does there he just throws his body and you don't want to do that in that moment I think he just should stay, have come across stay with him stayed, stays on his feet block it yeah it's I, a bit yeah. It's, it's a, like you said it's a, it's a funny one but like the low did that very well to be fair I thought he was brilliant as well he, he was Two for me as man brilliant. of the match yeah. definitely my man of the match the low yeah, I think I on the ball and off the ball and defensively made uh, so many big moments I think the low's definitely nailed down his he, yeah. his yeah. player of the season for United which is goes a long way because he's someone that for a lot of the fan base are very yeah. very critical of yeah. you know, he does his moments I think people do watch his game under a bit of a microscope sometimes and they don't actually appreciate some of the things he does well but yeah. Once again, it, it talks about we drawn this game two all, twenty eight shots conceded again. I, it, I think that's just what United are now, mm. and we can talk about sustainability and whether we can do this week and week out and not get punished. But I, I, a, yeah. I don't think anything's going to change. And uh, there are a lot of people in the comments that are very upset with the fact that um, Ten Hag made changes that they deem negative. Do you know what I mean? No, it was and the I, subs. I, I, do I, agree. I said it straight away. I said it straight away. The subs. Amrabat would was never a player that I would have thought would have featured today. I, I just I, don't. I just don't. I think it was a wasn't the right thing to do. It I wasn't completely a negative agree. Sub. But I think it's like people dress it up, not dressing it up in that sense, saying that it's like a negative sub. But I think what people are focusing on is saying, yeah, you're going defensive. Sometimes the attacking sub can work out more defensively, and I said that earlier because we needed someone quite different on left to close out the game, and I thought Mark would have been better there. Because we needed a get out, but also we need someone who can come into the centre and keep it a bit more compact. Because naturally, he's not like a wide right? slash. He's, he's a bit of in the middle. He's not yeah. like a winger. I think so. They're the type of players that will close out a game. And I think you should have want when you make that mount sub, you make it earlier for Ganacho. I think there, and you keep Bruno in the hole. Mm -hmm. And it felt like we just doubled up with Amrabat and Casemiro so deep on the edge of the bar, edge of our box. We pushed all the way shot, back, yeah. and we kept allowing. Shots we kept allowing opportunities because of how deep we ended up dropping in, and and when you go two two then and you want to go and win the game or chase the game, there's no there's no real attacking threat. You got Bruno out out wide on the left, who's he's not a winger. He's not going to get at, at anyone. Amrabat, even though he was on for ten fifteen minutes, just not having him at all, just giving the ball away. He's just not at it. Mm. And it's like if you put Ahmad on there, for example, on Mount. Mm. You know, in them positions, it can affect the game. They're attacking players. We just when we went two-two, you know, Anthony had the chance, but did we ever look like we was going to push on and win the game? Mm. It's more of a like, uh, all right, are we going to we're going to hold off here? I, I know we had the chance, but I thought when we turned the game into to that again transitional air hockey kind of chaotic first fifteen minutes in the second mm. half, I think we sucked to Liverpool a bit into playing our way, and and yeah. I think it hurt them a bit, and I think they are going to ruse some of the chances and opportunities that they had to kind of kill the game. Definitely. And obviously against United, we talk about the fact that we are moments FC a lot and players do operate in moments. It always feels like if you don't get a one or two goal lead against yeah. United, we are capable of doing Pulling something back, or yeah. creating something. And I think after that though, when we, we went quite defensive and sat back, usually you feel like we don't have the defenders to be able to do that. But I thought they created a little bit less, even though obviously Salah on the rebound mm -hmm. there, Probably could have scored, and Diaz. obviously, obviously Diaz. the Diaz won. But Should score. I that think we rolled our luck in some instances today. But kept Salah quiet though today. Did like I think yeah, outside of that chance and then the penalty in the end, I didn't feel massively threatened by Salah today. I think the main threat was probably Diaz throughout the game, and Nunes had a bit of a half chance where he weirdly like put it across goal. It is healed, isn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna. Can you 
continue to get some of the comments and I'm going to read out some of what people are saying in the chat now. I've got another super chat that might be, he's a ninth one so far that I've seen. MDRN Samurai has said, quality game lads, but where is a team away and against bottom table teams? It doesn't make sense. I hope these goals haunt Liverpool forever if someone else lifts the trophy this season. Exactly. I know we are basically picking and choosing who would rather win the title out of our top three rivals, which is a position I don't want to be in for long. No. But I think it's better someone else other than Liverpool winning it, that's for sure. And I think that's one of the main positives in terms of denting it. From my point of view, when we went 2-0 two, two down and people thought oh, we should have gone for it a little bit more, I think in certain games when you've got a bit more a cushion and we're closer yeah. to the top four, I think you can be more s settled with a draw or like keeping yeah. it or strutting up shot. But unfortunately, in a position United are in, if we have got any aspirations of getting Champions League football, a draw doesn't exactly help yeah, us. No, but I think against the Liverpool them, side yeah. that everyone expected to blow us away, it's not the worst result. Yeah, And I, I, I'm not going to lie to you, I do want to get Abdullah's um, opinion on Rashford because he was receiving a lot of criticism again today. <laughs> I did see it in the chat. I did peep it. What would you say on his performance? I think, to be honest, like... The, like I said, in my opinion, I think the narrative is like set, so it doesn't really matter what I say in general. I think whether you like it's one of them. I think it's it's whether you like him or you don't sort of thing at this stage. I think my only issue overall is when you guys highlighted like the press and then a lot of things. That's football criticism, and it's a fair way of analysing the game. But I'm not, I'm just not a fan of like the constant scapegoating and like when you talk about pre-game, if you understand football, which I've just seen this pop up on my timeline. Um, and someone was saying like I'm quite baffled by everyone questioning him starting in this type of game and I think this is where it, it like the overhating starts because you think last time out against Liverpool he was a constant threat yeah. like set up McTominay with two chances and then scored the goal and obviously him missing the two chances says a lot as well because he was getting in them positions and he's when you're playing against a high line even for people that don't rate him or despise him or whatever it is in the fan base that's one thing you'll never take away from him is when it's an open end to end game, it's probably going to give you something. Now today, I didn't think like set the world alight. I didn't think it was that bad. No, one thing I'll say in the first half, which is, is not just him. I think overall our forwards, because Bruno was having one of them sort of games where he's the final a, ball yeah, was off. Form, he? Sometimes he was genuinely on that last shoulder and you think, bang, that's the in now. And he, and he didn't get it. And then the second half, I thought like he dropped into more of a creative zone where he's putting crosses in and they were quite dangerous. And I think the, up to that stage, and I obviously got injured and got subbed off, but my, my general opinion like with it and going back to what I was discussing with like, you know, Roy Keane and, and Rio and a lot of the, the Man United legends, which we all love and, and support and stuff and, and what they've done for the club. I think sometimes what I don't like is the whole, the, the super over the top scapegoating culture. And sometimes when every week you see it on Sky, TNT and, and the, the thing, it's like him, where's the gaffer in the conversation you know where's Casemiro where's a lot of do you know what I mean and sometimes people have got to stand up and, and give more of a to back to, yeah, you'll be backing obviously. and you'll become more biased obviously because you think you'll become more biased because obviously he's one of my favourite players and I see my thing with Rashford is I see that ilk of player that dangerous player in European football if he's at a Bayern if he's at a PSG if he's at Arsenal City now and Liverpool, they do get maximised. Now, there's a lot of talk about effort and situations like that, where like, that's where you press, that's where you make the effort. And when you lads said that, I said, I don't disagree with that because that's fair yeah, analysis. I, I, I think yeah, you done that though. For me, I think you done that at times today. Like, you know, when yeah. we was having a bit of a laugh after your, yeah. after your, no, what you said, I, because, it's, it's right. and then, I, I you know, he smashed someone in the corner, he's pressing, yeah. like, that's, especially that in a game yeah, like today, you want, you want to see it. No, for me, it's just a pile on, isn't it? I do, I do, I do, I do, I do hear it, but I will look at some of the, super chats again on, on some yeah. of the comments but first can you push the like button please can we try and get to a thousand likes to all against Liverpool and hampering their title hopes can you please smash the like button but for the super chats you've got Tierman I feel like it's always a proper pronounced job with a lot of these names on this <laughs> I mean quadruple they said my end clops last season with just a Carabao Cup love it exactly I do love that another super chat by Akash Solomon is Casa had a pool jer jersey underneath, I swear to God. And that was the next point I wanted to talk about because personally, we, we spoke about some of the players that have done well, some of the players that didn't do too well. Yeah. And I think Casemiro had bits of decent play in the first half, but yeah. I thought his second half was 
extremely poor and diabolical. And I think for an experienced mm. midfielder to give away a free kick like he did, for them to cross it in with like mm. 10 seconds left, being that rash, was, I think that was indicative of how he performs a lot of the time, where it's just a little bit like he's, every, Casemiro this season can be described as half a yard off. Everything he does, his yeah. passing, his defensive coverage, his tracking back, his press, it's everything best, just seems that's like that's the probably the best off. analogy you know I mean? of it that I've seen. Like everything's literally half. Yeah, everything. Yeah. You feel like sometimes he gets his foot on the ball, he sees the pass, and then he like slows. Do you think it's so? Is is much more effective? Like I said, when he has a bit of a picture in his mind, when he yeah. when when he when he plays Scans off one and two touch and he breaks lines yeah. and stuff. When he starts trying to take too many touches, but like Ronnie said, off the ball, I feel like, you know, the pace of the way the Premier League is and stuff like that's really catching up on him. It feels like a couple of times today he was getting close and he was just bypassing him and just looked too easy. And that's when he draws fouls. But for me, yeah, some good bits, but, you know, not, not the best second half from him today. So do you think this kind of dashes United's top five or even top six hopes? I know some people said that mm. after the Chelsea game is pretty much done and dusted but it felt like we could have almost nicked to win it because this was a game yeah. that a lot of United fans already put away as a loss and obviously we've gained a point from it yeah. but at, we've come out of the two games against Chelsea and Liverpool with just one and even though you had Villa drop points yesterday again and you've got Tottenham playing for us you don't know how that's going to materialise it, it does feel like an opportunity missed because we're 2-1 up with 10 minutes to go yeah it does it, it does in that way when you put it that way because it gets same with Chelsea like the game management you when you're two one up or you know three two up, you just like to game see management a bit of changes game management everything and, there. Changes and just, everything, just see yeah. the games out and stuff. Like you said, it's a it's a bit of a rash decision. It's happened a lot this season, hasn't it? Like Champions League a couple of times, um, which I felt that was actually a, an example. Galatasaray away, funnily enough, because it was Amrabat the other way because I wouldn't have subbed Amrabat off that day, mm. um, and then today you sub him on. But that was like a bad example of that, and a couple of other occasions. And you think managing the game a bit better, like. Copenhagen away when Rashford gets sent off like second half no indie approach there like game management like you said it's, it's, it makes a big difference and when I was seeing it back to back I think as much as Eric with the starting setup and the stuff tactically we can discuss a lot of times we've, you know we've, we've ended up in these positions because that actual substitutions killed him even when we've had an okay game yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I'm not sure quite what the fallout will be in terms of if we got we had a battering today, everyone thought tonight's job would be on yeah. the line. I think getting a two all it and there being like, if they're minimal, at least there's some positives. Yeah. I don't think it was anything was major going to change anyway. I think it's the decision that's probably going to still be made at the end of the season. And it shouldn't it shouldn't but change based off one game like today in it like it should be based. It wouldn't off be off like one game. It'd be in, it'd be yeah. In yeah, a combination of like a, 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 collect a collective. But the, yeah, but the, the thing is, it still is a question mark. Is the subs. That's for me. I feel like, and I, I might be being real. I think some of him that he made were two one up, and he wanted us. He wanted the game to be a little bit more controlled in terms of us it. getting. It made us more vulnerable. More it, it made us like, no. It made us more vulnerable though. That's my you, issue. With it. Would you have thought that he would? I get what you're saying there, Ronnie. About you know, you two one up. You want to see the game out, but like, wouldn't have thought that Amrabat would have even featured today. No. I'm being honest, no matter how the game was but, going, but it's just, just it, like, but it's 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 what other option do we have? Is is the thing? It's not like United aren't blessed with a lot of players that are excelling at the moment. We see McTominay mm. working in the squad, and he's not exactly been pulling up trees either. It's like when you look to the bench, where do you actually go? Do you really know what I mean? And he, he didn't yeah. he didn't put Ahmad on again, yeah. which a, a lot of people will have an yeah. issue with. But I d I don't even I w I would have loved to see Ahmad at some stage, but like I didn't have a massive issue with that because he ended up with Anthony as the sub. Mm. My thing was like, I don't know if you noticed this, Ronnie, but once Amrabat and Casemiro were on, we were almost just stepped yeah, further they, back yeah, and we kept similar. allowing shots. They're similar and they, and they both slow. They, they were in the same zone it's and it was like they weren't giving anything. Casemiro is better than Amrabat, but they're similar. I think you could have made a defensive substitution, just not that one. Like I said, the Mount one with him tucking in, make it more compact and then allow Bruno to still be in the hole with Casemiro. Maybe it was Would the, time, yeah. uh, the time. But the time. But anyway. but anyways, it's two-two against like a title challenging team with the season we've had, and you stop like you said Liverpool on the way. Exactly. It is what it is. Exactly. So I probably will end it there. We've got. It's been an, a lovely few hours with you, lads. So it's always you're always smirking there, RH. Do you know what I mean? I think always, you wouldn't be smirking if you lost that. But no, I think some of the debates smirking. that we've had, some here, of the discussions, <laughs> <laughs> some of the disagreements. But as yeah. we have just said, we have drawn two all to Liverpool they have failed to beat us in three games now 
doesn't quite help us in our push for top five, but at least we have stopped yeah. Liverpool in their tracks in terms of getting a title. But thanks again for joining yeah. us and I Pleasure. will see you next time.